Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I am starting a reading vlog for March Mystery Madness. So recently, my friend Cousin at Always Doing, who I'll link below, had mentioned that she loves it when I show food in my reading vlogs, and I realized I haven't made a reading vlog for a little while, so I thought, let's make one, and since it's March and I have a couple of mystery books checked out from the library right now, I thought let's do a March Mystery Madness reading vlog. So this this year the March Mystery Madness theme is two by two and I have two books checked out and one of them is a sequel so I thought this is perfect. So the first book that I'm going to be reading is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Masi and this is a book that I've heard about from Rincey at Rincey Reads who I'll link below and it just sounds really great. It's set in the 1920s in India and follows a woman who is one of the first female Indian lawyers uh, and it just sounds like it's going to be filled with history and politics politics and mystery and that sounds amazing. Then the other book that I want to read is The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osmond and this is the second book in the Thursday Murder Club uh, series. I had read the first book a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was great so I wanted to continue on which is all about a group of retirees who are solving mysteries that happen in their small little British community um, and that's a contemporary one. So I think these are going to be a ton of fun to read so join me as I check in with you guys and also share some clips from Life As We Go. Okay, so I made a little bit of progress on my reading and I wanted to check in with you guys. So I got 16% through The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman and I am loving this. It is just as good as the first book so far. It is just gripping. Already there's interesting things happening and the characters are just so great. There's excellent banter between them. Um, and this is, you know, four older, um, kind of in their 70s retirees who end up getting involved in a lot of uh, interesting murder cases in their little British town. And in this, we have some interesting people from the kind of background of Elizabeth, the leader of the group, who seems to have a very interesting and mysterious past, coming back to ask her for help. And then we also have some other things going on with each of the other characters. And it's just, it's immediately fun and funny and gripping and just so good. So I'm absolutely loving that. Then I got 10% through The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Masi. And this is the one set in 1920. 20s, I think, yeah, 1920s in India. And this one I think has really, really cool setting. Like there's so much interesting stuff happening politically at that time in India. Really cool. Um, it's also kind of got a very feminist focus because we're following this lawyer who um, is basically the first female lawyer in India, right, in the story. Uh, and so that's like really cool, but the writing just was not working out for me for this one. I actually decided to DNF it. Basically in this first 10%, most of that 10% was spent info dumping. Normally I don't get info dumping uh, in things like mysteries that generally happens in stuff like um, fantasy or sci-fi, but this was really, really heavy info dumping, just very clunky, lots and lots of information poured on you all at once. And I just, that's not my style. I like to be thrown in the middle of things. Um, so yeah, so that didn't work out so well for me. And there was also quite a bit of drama, uh, kind of personal drama because the main character is really impetuous and very much acts out of anger or just the first thing that pops into her head and she gets into a lot of 
difficult interactions and she's facing like a lot of sexism and other things too that get her riled up so that was just a, a little bit not my style so I DNF that one but instead I decided to pick up two other books that had been on my TBR uh, and when I went to look at like what do I want to replace this with I just couldn't decide between these two so the first book that I decided to use as a replacement is Sword Dance by A.J. DeMoss. This is a book that I heard about from Rachel at Colinati, who I'll link below. And it is basically a romance novel that has a mystery subplot. So this is set in a secondary world that is inspired by ancient Greece. So lots of, um, you know, warnings for bunches of slavery in this world, by the way. Um, and we follow uh, a guy who used to be in the military, but now he's sort of retired from that and he kind of works for the government. And he's trying to procure fish sauce uh, for the army. They need obviously lots of food. And he goes to this country estate of a woman he used to know who owns a fish sauce company company in order to do that. But while he's there, he meets a bunch of other people who are visiting her and they seem very shady and like lots of weird stuff is going on. He keeps overhearing very strange conversations and he's trying to figure out what are these people doing? Why are they here? Um, one of the other people at this house is a, a foreigner from a different place. And this person is a eunuch and sort of a non-binary person. Um, and they are also a sword dancer so they do this dance with swords i haven't quite gotten to the part yet where we see what that is um but they seem like a really interesting person that he's starting to connect with but everybody else just seems super shady so it's interesting to see how that's going to play out the other book that I decided to pick up was another recommendation, uh, and that is Japanese Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edogawa Dampo, translated by James B. Harris. So recently, Municorn at the Bookish Land did a video all about Edogawa Dampo, so I'll link that below, who was kind of the first person to write mystery novels in Japan. Um, and so it just sounded so interesting from everything that Municorn was saying, and I thought, you know, let me pick this up. So this is is a collection of short stories and I've read the first short story so I am now 16% into the collection and the first story was so good and so creepy and it just really um, makes a ton of sense for Edoga Adampo whose name is sort of based on the Japanese pronunciation of Edgar Allan Poe so Edga Adampo and Edoga Adampo Anyway, so it, but it felt a little bit like Edgar Allan Poe's writing, you know, this kind of creepiness. Um, the first story was called The Human Chair, and it is so creepy and so mysterious. You're like waiting for what is going to happen. And it's all about sort of people being awful, human depravity, and just that slight like horror that any of it is happening, um, but mystery in terms of what is going to happen. So really great first story. Very excited to read the rest of those. So yeah, so one story ended up not working for me, The Widows of Malabar Hill, but the other three books are really, really strong so far, and I'm very excited to continue with them. So I'll check in with you again once I've read a little bit more.
about halfway through all of the books now and I wanted to check in with you. For The Man Who Died Twice, I am just really enjoying this. It has got a lot of very interesting things going on. We've got some very powerful mafia type people. Um, we've got MI5, which is like British Secret Service. We've got um, a whole lot of stolen diamonds, all sorts of really, really interesting things going on. And we have uh, also a lot of like interesting personal things going on too. Um, for example, they work with some local police officers and one of the police officers who's a middle-aged guy has gotten into a new relationship and all of these sorts of things. So there's like so much connection to the characters and to um, their kind of growth as people and their connection to each other, but also just all of this interesting, dangerous stuff going on in the background. And there's already been a couple of things that are um, subverting expectations. So you kind of go into a scene, you think you understand what's happened, and then you learn that no, actually this is what's going on. So it's a little bit of a little bit of twists, but not too extreme. So yeah, very much enjoying this and just such great writing. Then for Sword Dance, um, definitely this country house mystery where the soldier and everybody else's has started to come together. We're starting to understand there's actually a bunch of political intrigue that's going on. A a lot of uh, people there are philosophers and they have this um, kind of uh, mentality of the ideal republic and things like that. So it's got a lot of commentary on society and politics as well. Um, and we're starting to see the soldier and the sword dancer come together. So that's really uh, very, very interesting. And I'm looking forward to the romance they're developing. And then the last book, Japanese Tales of Mystery and Imagination, I've read a couple more tales in that now, and a bunch of them really do remind me of Edgar Allan Poe or Sherlock Holmes. They have that feel to them in terms of the style of writing, but also in terms of, you know, having some people who are really, really intelligent, but maybe totally lack a moral compass. Um, there was a guy who kind of wanted to get away with a perfect murder. There's another guy who gets so obsessed with mirrors um, as a scientist that he goes down a very dark path. So a lot of just kind of creepy things. Although there was one story that I really, really, really strongly disliked, which was The Caterpillar, which I think had just almost toxic ableism it was it was really upsetting actually i had to dnf that story and i suggest that if you read this collection just skip that story entirely i don't know the last time i've read something that has been just so awful to read in terms of of ableism it was it was pretty upsetting um but the other stories have been pretty good so i'll go ahead and continue on with the with the book as it is so i will check in with you guys when i have finished all of these books but i am very much enjoying them so far Okay, so I finished all three books and I wanted to check in with you guys, tell you what I thought and wrap up this vlog. So the first book that I ended up finishing was Sword Dance, which was just such a wonderful read. Um, I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the mystery part of it was 
really interesting, not very twisty turny, but just trying to unravel what exactly was going on. And it was a very political intrigue based mystery. And that kind of wrapped up around the halfway point of the book as far as the mystery was concerned. And then we were just dealing with the repercussions of the rest of the political intrigue. And just the way that the that the soldier and the sword dancer came together to kind of um, be partners in this and really just slowly fall in love with each other was so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. And I used the wrong pronouns for the sword dancer before. Um, the pronouns for the sword dancer are he, him. Uh, but yeah, they were just such a sweet couple. I really liked the writing. I loved the world building. I loved the political intrigue. The mystery in the beginning was great. It was just a fantastic book and I definitely would recommend that one. Um, then the second book that I finished was Japanese Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edogawa Nampo and this one ended up being okay but definitely not my favorite so the more stories that i read um the more similar they ended up feeling there was definitely that writing style that i liked that's evocative of edgar Allan poe or sherlock holmes but it also just had a really repetitive nature in terms of having so many different stories which were some very smart but evil person confessing to a bunch of murders that they did in a very clever way um and so that was a little bit repetitive uh also just ableism kept popping up in multiple stories and i found that a little bit a little bit hard so this was pretty much a, a mixed bag for me i i liked some of it but i'm not sure that i would pick up another book by dumpo so um and then the last book that i finished was such a success, um, The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman, and this was even better than the first book. I mean, I loved the first book, but this one was just perfect. I loved the writing, I loved the characters, and I think that one of the things this book did even better than the first one was the way that the mystery itself played out. Because I had some suspicions, but nothing really firm. And as we went further into the story, um, the characters themselves are trying to figure out what's going on. And, you know, you're with them as they make each of these sort of deductive leaps. And, you know, some of them are wrong and, and they're, they keep trying to go forward. And it's just so fascinating. I was with them the entire way. So I think that the mystery aspect of this is just really, really on point. The characters are so fantastic. I loved the way that it ended. It's It was just such a joy to read. Uh, just one of those things that has that kind of funny and cozy mystery feel, but is actually a little bit more thriller-like, a little bit more intense at times. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was wonderful. So I really recommend that one. Uh, overall, this reading vlog has been a ton of fun. I really enjoyed the books that I tried, and I was really glad that I tried a couple that, even if they didn't work out so well for me, that have been on my list for a while. So yeah, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the vlog and if you have read any of these or if you have any thoughts anything at all leave me a comment down below